Welcome to Guns and Ammo TV. We got a great show planned for you. I'm Kyle Lamb. And I'm Craig Boddington. On Tactical Hunter, Kyle and I are going to look at the 300 Blackout. You know that's a cartridge that's got a lot of buzz about it, so we're going to look at it for hunting and for tactical. In all about AR, James Tarr and Dick Metcalf are going to talk about the incredible variety of chamberings available for the AR frame today, all the way from 17 to 50. At the range, we're going to take a look at the CAR CW45, 40, and 9. Another great weapon system from CAR. Hey, so let's get to Dick Metcalf's hands-on review of the CAR pistol. At the Range is brought to you by galleryofguns.com. Like all high-end firearms manufacturers, CAR Arms offers both its premium level products and a line of value price products. This is the CW45, the 45 ACP version of the C family. Bob, how do they uh, make Thank such you. an economical gun? Well, what, what we've done, Dick, is we've been able to reduce the cost of manufacture. You'll note that the, uh, on the slide that, that we've just machined a flat as opposed to a radius like on the P-series. You'll also note on the front sight, there's no dovetail. We just have a staked front sight. Uh, the barrel itself is a land and groove rifle barrel versus a polygonal rifle barrel. And lastly, the uh, uh, slide stop lever uh, on this gun is a metal injected molded or MIM slide stop versus a machined. Now, does that mean the quality is any less than this? No. So they, basically can, this, this is a P-series gun with the same performance standards and performance specs. It's just costs less to buy because it costs you less to manufacture it. That's exactly right. You can get this gun, this is a CW45, you can get uh, this gun also in, uh, in 9mm and 40mm. And uh, coming this year, uh, we are introducing a CW380. All right, all right. So with the uh, C family of uh, pistols from Car Arms, you have all of Car's reliability, all of Car's performance, and all of Car's quality, but in a gun with an MSRP, you won't even believe. The popularity of the AR-15 is at an all-time high, and there's a few reasons for this. It's a light rifle, doesn't recoil much, and it's got great ergonomics. The problem with the AR-15 is that it's chambered in 223. Um, 55-grain bullet out of a 16-inch barrel is going to be moving out about 27, 2800 feet per second, which gives it an effective range for defense somewhere between 0 to 200 meters. A um, few years back, the military decided, hey, look, let's try to find a cartridge that gives us some more ballistic horsepower but that will fit in a standard size AR-15 because it's got killer ergonomics. We want to keep those. So the cartridge they came up with was the 6.8. The problem we found with the 6.8 is that while it's pretty close to the same size as a 223, you can see lengthwise it's about the same, it's quite a bit fatter. It'll work in a metal magazine but you can't get it to work in a polymer magazine. Uh, recently a company named LWRCI d designed a rifle that they call their 6.8, go figure. And but they fixed all the weak spots that were historically associated with the 6.8. And the first one they fixed was the magazine well. And what they did was they opened it up. And by opening it up, they teamed up with a company named Magpul, who designs polymer magazines. Now this is the 5.56 version. This is going to be the currency of the apocalypse. Uh, these are everywhere. They're cheap. Um, everybody loves them. The problem is, like I said, you can't make a polymer magazine out of 6.8 with a standard size AR-15 magazine well. So they opened it up, boom. Now we got a polymer magazine that works. You can see it's a little bit thicker, and stand them side by side, it's a little bit taller. So now we've got a great magazine, inexpensive, reliable, awesome. The, uh, the next fix they had was they made it completely and totally ambidextrous. The safety, the bolt catch, and the magazine release are found on both sides of the rifle. So it's completely and totally ambidextrous, right-handed, left-handed. You're shooting around the right side of the barricade, left side of the barricade, it doesn't matter. Charging handle, they've also got a charging handle that they designed that's, that's uh, ambidextrous also. Now, the Achilles heel of the AR-15 is the bolt. Um, if a bolt breaks, it's gonna break at the cam pin, or it's gonna break on either side of the extractor, these two lugs. LWRC is one of the few manufacturers, in fact, one of the only ones that I know of, that uses a steel that's one grade higher than mil spec. They use 9310. Mil spec is Carpenter 158. The most common consumer grade material used for an AR-15 bolt is 8620. So two grades above the most common consumer steel. They're one grade above military steel. Uh, they put dual springs on their extractor. 
coated it in nickel boron. So between the improvements made to the bolt, the uh, improvements made to the magazine well, and making the uh, rifle completely and totally ambidextrous, LWRCI has worked out the wrinkles uh, historically associated with the AR-15, much to our benefit. Guns and Ammo is brought to you by Smith & Wesson. Defending my brothers. Securing our streets. Protecting everything I love. Just being prepared. I need a firearm that's torture tested. Engineered to the highest possible standard. Fire thousands of rounds without fail. Built in America and proven it can perform anywhere. Because a single shot can be the difference between life and death. Defeat and coming home. That's why I choose SIG. The large capacity hot tub sonic cleaner from Hornady makes short work of cleaning 16 inch AR uppers and small gun parts that could otherwise take hours. Combined with our one shot sonic clean solution, you can remove tarnish from pistols, choke tubes, muzzle loader parts and other small gun parts. And for the reloader it's the ultimate brass cleaner, removing residue from the inside of your case as well as the primer pocket. This kind of efficiency is what you should expect from all your tools. This is Hornady. Guns and Ammo is brought to you by Kiapa. Adam, I'm old school. I grew up with a Model 1911 in my hand. I carried cocked and locked. That's what I'm familiar with. That's what I like. And I'm holding a SIG P226 in my hand, but it's got a difference. This is a 226 single action only. You can carry cocked and locked. You certainly can. Uh, you know, for, for years we've had our classic line of double action only or double action single action pistols out and we're very excited to uh, introduce our 226 with a single action only trigger. A lot of folks want that either they want a consistent trigger pull from pull to pull or they like that 1911 style cocked and locked type of action and here it is, uh, the beautiful 226 with single action. Uh, we're, we're all extremely excited about this. Well, one. I'm a left hander too and I really like the fact that you're making this gun standard with ambidextrous safety, which makes it instantly user-friendly for me as a left-hander and as a 1911 fan. But it's got some features that a 1911 doesn't have, doesn't it? Yeah, it certainly does. Uh, what the uh, single action only feature on the 226 will allow us to do is cycle, rack the slide, do press checks, even disassemble the pistol if we wanted to without ever having to take the pistol off uh, off safe. So safe is always nice on. Feature. Yeah, you can always leave the safety on. Well, that's and, something you know, that John Browning definitely forgot to yeah, do with the 1911. Sure was. I, well, I mean, well, I'm not going to knock him, that's for sure. But the uh, having the ability to keep my safety on and do a press check or, or load all with the safety on is a nice little feature. So we're real happy with that. Well, this is just remarkable. And I love the feel of the 226. Everybody does. And now you've got that feel with all the familiarity. This is really, I don't want to call it up 
professional's gun, but for the true 1911 aficionado, this is the modern SIG arm pistol he wants. I know you like it. That's what you carry for duty, isn't it? <laughs> it certainly is. In I've fact, that's what you're now. carrying right now, it, isn't it? It is. Uh, you're is. carrying cocked and locked, I'm aren't carrying you? cocked and locked. Well, why don't you deploy and demonstrate I'd how be, it works? I'd be happy to. Well, Feels why, pretty don't good. why don't I try it with this new one? Let's do it. And safety was on when That's I right. did that. Safety on. Hmm. Uh, not my, bad. My, my, I don't know. Your group's a little smaller. Let's finish this Let's thing out. Let's see what out. we do. You know, those were a few more rounds than fit in my 1911, too. Yeah, boy, that's a huge advantage right there, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is, yeah. The SIG P226 single action only. The perfect gun for the fan of the classic 1911 and the fans of the classic SIG format. Chuck, most discreet rifle cases are about as discreet as an unmarked cop car. And a lot of people are thinking, well, what do I need a discreet rifle case for? You know, I'm not a cop trying to get into a sniper position, but that's one use for it. But what if you live in an apartment building and you don't want your neighbors to exactly know what you're loading in your, out of your car or you're on vacation and you happen to have a rifle case in the back of your car? Sometimes it's good to have something that doesn't necessarily look like it contains a gun. And you guys have a whole line now of the, it's the diversion line? Diversion gun cases, yep. All right, well let's, well, let's start at one end and work our way down. All right, we go from the diversion sling pack, which is designed to let you carry or transport a concealed handgun. But if you need rapid access of it, we've got the universal fit holster inside. So it lets you access the gun very quickly. You've also got numerous other pockets and compartments. Uh, that you can use a key, uh, key holder. Very, very useful just for day to day. I frequently run around with my iPad in mine. They all come in a variety of colors, the blue and gray, the Ranger green and tan, gray and black, blue and white, blue and gray. And then we've also got, of course, red and black. Uh, this is the Diversion Carry Backpack. Uh, it's a standard backpack. This is actually my travel backpack for my laptop and my iPad. But again, you have the rapid access to a concealed handgun right. while looking like any other backpack running around in a variety of colors. There's 14,000 pockets on there for whatever you might need. Now this I know, it's a board pack. And anybody who's our age may not have any idea what a board pack is, but if you snowboard or you skateboard, yep. it's, it's a great size. But this one's specifically designed to take a rifle, two compartments, you can fit an upper and lower and an Air 15. It even has a uh, muzzle protector yep. to protect you. And then you've got the webbing so you can mount mag pouches, whatever you might need. Uh, Going with that there. modular, uh, you know, sort of functionality that we try to do in as much stuff as we can. And then this one's kind of interesting. It's a tennis racket case that we actually added some vinyl to to make it look as cheap as possible. So it's Which, very... He's not joking, folks. No? He actually, they actually did that because you don't want an expensive looking tennis racket case because people might steal it. Right. And it's as cheap looking as we can make it while still using the very high quality materials. Again, just like the longboard pack, it has a padded divider inside. Yeah. So you can break down your MSR and put the upper and lower halves in there and transport it looking like you're using the cheapest tennis racket that anybody could find. And then the last one is the gym bag, because who wants to steal a gym bag full of stinky clothes? Right, and, and, and normally a gym bag, you know, it's got end pockets and then you've got the main compartment in the, in the center. But this one, actually, it, it's, it's all a ruse, I mean, does that look familiar, folks? I mean, the entire center of this is is hollow, so you can stick an entire rifle in there. No matter how old you are or what environment you're living in, you guys make something that is right for you. Fits into every lifestyle. Guns and Ammo is brought to you by Laser Light.
By any workman's hands, iron and steel can be fired and forged to create structure. When those are American hands, ideas take shape and forge quality. Here, the artist can innovate and evolve performance. Together, the work of so many means peace of mind to just one. Put Stag in the right hands. Yours. Completing the mission, making it home to my family. That's my focus. Carrying Glock means I've got the best pistol, the best tool to perform my mission, to protect those I serve and my family. My Glock gives me confidence to live my life. Guns and Ammo is brought to you by Hornady. The AR world today isn't just about 5.56 and 7.62. In this week's All About AR, James Tarr and Dick Metcalf are going to take us through the unbelievable cartridge options available on the AR frame. All About ARs is brought to you by Kia. Welcome back to Dick Metcalf's Garage Sale Guns. That's sort of what it looks like. We got a little bit of everything here, but what amazes me is what we're trying to show here, just a huge variety of calibers and cartridges that this platform is available in. It may have been true that the original AR-15 platform was a 223, but that's certainly no longer the case. And of course, even before that came the 308s and the AR, original AR-10 platform. But today, we go all the gamut from the 204 Ruger to the 50 Beowulf, from 20 caliber to 50 caliber, from 32 grain bullet weights to 350 grain bullet weights. I mean, this 204 Les Bayer Varmint Special is uh, the little gun that I personally have shot with Prairie Dog the furthest away and the, shot the smallest group of 600 ever shot. And, and of course, you can't forget the 308 itself. Here's the new Smith & Wesson 308, the model uh, M&P 10, which is the lightest right now uh, true AR platform 308 on the market. All right, and then this, this is my personal Alexander Arms 300 Blackout. Blackout's one of the newer cartridges uh, on the horizon. I think of it sort of as a 30 carbine, 30 M1 carbine on steroids, very, out of the AR platform. That's a, that's, that's, that, that's a very good analogy, and this is clearly designed for tactical and personal defense personal use, defense. and that's how you've rigged this gun. And staying in the 30 caliber family, we can go to a cartridge which I think deserves better than it's gotten, which is the 30 Remington AR, which is a cartridge designed to put 308 performance into the AR-15 platform instead of the heavier uh, AR-10, R-25 platform. Right, and then next to it we've got uh, the Alexander Arms 6.5 Grendel, which actually Bill Alexander designed as a whitetail cartridge, but it's been adopted by all the tactical crowd because it flies so flat out to five, six, eight hundred yards. And then the last one on this table, at least, is the 450 Bushmaster, the Thumper, which was originally designed to be a hog-killing SOB, and it certainly does that, but I've shot quite a few big animals with it, and I know that it does really good on things like alligators as well. But, that, that, but again, I mean, th again, this only touches the surface. There are more than a dozen cartridges in the AR platform, both in the larger and the AR-15 platform. There there's something here for everybody in the modern sporting rifle. In our Tactical Hunter segment, Craig and I are going to talk about some of the hype that there's been on the 300 Blackout as a tactical round, but now we're going to talk about the 300 Blackout in the hunting world. Tactical Hunter is brought to you by Trigicon. Well, Craig, what do you think of the old 300 Blackout? Well, in a VTAC uh, Smith & Wesson MP15, what's not to like? But, <laughs> you know, seriously, this is a, it's a nice little cartridge. It gives you a 30 caliber option on an AR-15 frame. Uh, the subsonic round is a 
uh, a slow 220 grain bullet at just a little over a thousand feet per second. But about then the, that of a 230 grain ball, like right a 45 of, ACP. Right, right. But uh, the 125 grain loads 2,200 feet per second. Now that's that's a credible deer cartridge and really should be considered pretty similar to the 762 by 39, which will certainly work on deer at, at you just got to watch your range. It's not a long range round. Absolutely. But it was designed as a tactical round. It was. The way it kind of came about, uh, there's been an evolution from other, other ammunition up to the uh, 300 blackout. The military looked at it and they said, okay, this would be a great application to replace some of the MP5 SDs and things mm -hmm. like that that shoot a 9mm cartridge, which obviously it's got a lot more knockdown power sure. than that, and it can easily be suppressed. There's other things that are great about it. Obviously, we're shooting a, a lower receiver that's stock AR-15. Yep. We're shooting magazines that are AR-15, so that's really nice. The bolt, bolt carrier, everything's the same except for the actual uh, the actual barrel there. So there's definitely some validity as far as uh, the military looking at it for that application. Well, it's actually become really popular, and I think part of that is, is uh, you know, we've done a lot in guns and ammo on the 300 blackout, and it's, it's, people have responded, so it, it really is popular, but uh, actually it's great. I mean, as a, as a hunting cartridge, you can't go wrong with 30 caliber. Yeah. If you can get a 125 grain bullet up to that velocity in, in this tiny little cartridge, let me look at that. It's, yeah. uh, it's all bullet and no case. Well, Pretty amazing. You know, one thing you bring up is the media hype, and I, I do believe that the popularity of this cartridge, most of it came from the hype, and as we've discussed on the sidelines here, that the name is pretty cool too, <laughs> so that cool. could have had a lot to do with it. What I would say though, for me as a former soldier, I wouldn't want to carry just the 300 blackout in the battlefield simply because at the extended distances like the boys and girls are shooting at uh, in Af Afghanistan, I'd probably want something that's a little flatter shooting. And if I had my choice, 7.62 or 300 blackout, I'm probably gonna take the, the 308 there. So that's just my take on it. Although if we're looking at a suppressed weapon, it's probably the the kitty cat's butt right now. Well, it really now, is. I, and I'm not really sure it replaces the 5.56 either altogether, but for its specialized application, pretty good. I do wanna take one hunting though. Absolutely. Guns and Ammo is brought to you by Ruger. The Kiapa 1911-22 puts the fun back in an afternoon at the range. LaserLight, the leader in laser technology, introduces the new Ruger LCP Side Mount Laser. It's compact, it's light, and fits all pocket holsters. Keep the holster you already use. LaserLight also offers a side mount laser that fits nearly all Taurus revolvers, including the Judge. For more innovative products from LaserLight, go to laserlight.com. That's laserlight.com. Guns and Ammo is brought to you by Glock. 
Full Auto is brought to you by Stag Arms. In the century of their existence, submachine guns have gone through a number of generations. This second generation Sten gun is an exemplar of the crude construction, the ugly welds, the sheet metal it's made out of, and the general unhandiness of a submachine gun. Now, that's Gen 2. If you want to see something that's beautiful, you look at a first generation gun like this MP28. The MP28 was an evolution of the earlier World War I vintage MP18 submachine guns, and both of them were just beautifully built with classical 19th century style machining, blued metal, and nice hand finished stocks. And there was a huge difference. Now, of course, the issue yes. with a generation gun like the MP28 was simply its cost and time in manufacture. Well, there's also the weight. I mean, this is pretty handy for being a piece of industrial machinery. And this feels kind of like a club. <laughs> it's short, it's, you know, it's maneuverable, but this barrel shroud is thick steel that's been machined, and even with all these ventilation holes, it's still pretty studly. Well, that weight must make it controllable, Dave. Well, you want to find out? Give it a go. Well, it's certainly a lot of fun. Well, at what, 11 and a half, 12 pounds, it certainly isn't going to ride up much in recoil either. No, especially because it's just chambered for your standard 9 by 19 millimeter parabellum cartridge. Right. And uh, like I said earlier, this was an evolution of the MP18 submachine guns. These first saw combat in the big offensive of 1918. And they're issued to German stormtroopers. They infiltrated forward, right. bypassed you know major points of resistance, and just tried to advance. Uh, those early guns, though, were actually designed to take a 32-round snail drum magazine, Luger. originally designed for the Luger P08 right. pistol, and so they kind of cocked off to one side. Although I have to tell you, if you're going to be clearing out a trench using this with a 30-round magazine as opposed to a five-shot bolt-action rifle that's four and a half feet long. Um, yeah, give me the short one, even if it's heavy. I mean, this is like napalm. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> napalm in 1918, that was some advance. Hey, thanks for being with us. We'll see you next week. But in the meantime, check us out at GunsAndAmmo.com and be sure to pick up a copy of Guns and Ammo at your newsstand. And we will see you at the range. Closed captioning is brought to you by LWRC.